presentation, we're going to show how to use R to grow a portfolio over time. First, let's define the problem that we have. So we have a set of returns. In this example, or in this video, we're going to use uh, a five period return, say for example in the first year returning 5%, the second year 20% and so on. So you have the set of returns over time and you want to see how a beginning balance is going to grow over time. Often you'll use this to analyze a large set of data, perhaps a large portfolio over many periods, say daily, uh, for a number of years. And So this problem can grow rather large very quickly. In this example we're going to show just a uh, one set of returns over five years. Uh, one thing to, to remember is the difference between the arithmetic and the geometric means. Oftentimes people will use the wrong average when looking at returns. Most people might look at these five set of returns and simply add them and divide by five and come up with 4.2. Uh, that's clearly wrong, as you'll see when you grow the portfolio. You need to use the geometric mean when analyzing the average of returns for a portfolio. Uh, if you want to learn more about the difference between the arithmetic, the geometric, and the harmonic means, as well as when to use them, please refer to the article on economistatlarge.com. So it comes down to what would, say, $1,000 invested and that portfolio with those returns be worth at the end of year five. So let's set up the solution now that we have the problem. First, we're gonna use a function in R that takes two arguments. The first being a numeric array of the returns and the second argument being the starting balance. The first thing you'll see we're going to do is order the returns so that the earliest return is first then we're going to create a matrix to store the portfolio as it grows. And then we're going to use a for loop to loop through each one of the periods and grow the balance one period by the next. And we'll walk through this in detail as I show you the actual code. Finally, we're going to reset the names of the columns uh, and the rows and return the matrix. A little bit more detail on what I mean when I say we're going to loop through the matrix. And this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult uh, to think through the logic of how to set up this function. So the first loop, and we're going to use i as the uh, to designate which loop we're in. So when i equals 1, we're going to set the first row of the matrix to be the starting balance. So you'll see here in the first row we're going to set it to, in this case, 1000. In the rest of the loops, in this case 2 through 5, we're going to, in this case, set R2 equals to 1 plus the returns of the previous row, so in this case this would be 2 minus 1 or 1, times the balance of the first row, or 2 minus 1 equals 1. Let's walk through a live example so you can see how to set the code up. Okay, so now let's look at the actual R code. Now that we've defined the problem and set up the solution. I'm using the R console, which is a front end to the, to the R package. Uh, you can use the R, R console, you can use um, Plain R, there's a few other uh, tools that you can use. I find that the uh, R console is an easy to use platform. So first you'll notice up here uh, that I have the actual uh, code that I discussed uh, in the PowerPoint laid out, already typed. I call the, the function grow investment, it takes two arguments, one being the numeric vector of returns, the second being the start balance. Next I uh, want to know how long or how many returns there are, so I simply solve length, and then I set up the matrix. The matrix here is uh, set up to have uh, n plus 1 rows, so r will be equal to n, uh, r will be equal to n plus 1 uh, in terms of how many rows it has, and then I set up the for loop. I loop through, again, n plus 1, so this is going to be 1 through 6 in the example we're using, and if it's equal to the first iteration, I set the, the first row to 1,000. And then as I mentioned in the previous slide, 
I set the second row equal to 1 plus the return of the first row times the balance of the first row. Set the row names and return the matrix. So first let's set up the returns themselves. So in that case uh, we have, um, we'll set this up as a numeric vector. I've already typed this in so let's just go right through here. Test returns equals to, uh, is set to these five returns and you'll notice they're just in 0 0.05, 0 0.2 and that equals 5%, 20%, etc. Now as I mentioned you have to be careful when considering what the average is. Many people will simply say the average of these returns is equal to 4.2 which you can see by using the mean command in R. Uh, let's take a look at that and see that re uh, returns 4.2. Now that's wrong and we'll show that in a second. Let's look at what the actual geometric mean is. Um, I've already set up a function which you can uh, which you can look at and use freely off of economist.com that calculates the geometric means of any returns that you give it. Uh, we simply pass it the returns and because it's a geometric mean we have to add one. Uh, if you're unsure of how to use geometric means or what that means, I urge you to read the article. You'll see here it's 3.76 or about when you round it. So that's a big difference in what the actual average return over that five year period is. All right, so now let's actually calculate using the function that we have up here by simply putting that into memory, which is just running that command or running these lines and then calling it grow investment. Pass it the returns, and we'll give it thousand dollars as the starting balance, which is our example. And there you go. The first starting balance or period zero is thousand dollars. Starts off and grows at five percent, then at twenty, then at minus ten, then at five, and then at and then at one percent. And that's it. That's how you grow the investment. And if you want to test the result, see why the arithmetic mean is incorrect and the geometric mean is correct, you can do so using R as well. First, let's remind ourselves what the wrong answer was or the arithmetic or simple average. So that was again 4.2%. And the geometric mean was 3.76 about. So let's see what $1,000 times the one plus, and we'll just, one plus 0.042 to the power five. The resulting balance, if you use the simple average, would have been $1,228.40. And if you used, used the correct average or the geometric mean, $1,202.61. And again, the actual investment at the end of the period using the function that we just created was $1,202.61. So you can see the geometric mean was the correct average to use. And the arithmetic, which most people would use, is actually incorrect and gives you the wrong, overstates the balance by almost $26.